morning. It's kind of too low for me. I don't like it. Let's try it again. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Amen to that. Let me encourage you this morning. Can you hear me okay, Aloma? Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Amen. <laughs> oh, 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 let's try it again. What? Let's try it again. What's my name? There you go. You understood me. <laughs> Let me encourage you, friends. I receive a call this week. It touches me. I'm going to share it with you. I receive a call from a, a sister in Christ in, a, in the hospital. I have cancer. Her days are limited. She's going, she's blind. Uh, she's facing uh, eviction. It's like the whole world is going against her. She, one of our, our brothers went to visit her. She said, call Lewis. I want to hear from him. I love the blue. I answered the call. She said, Lewis, I'm 83 years old. Blind. Can't do much for myself. Only one thing left to do is waiting on the Lord. I don't know if I'll be able to see you. Because I'm going blind. But one thing I look for is to see you in heaven. When she was talking to me on the phone, friends, I was driving. Those kind of words kind of like it not touches you. I did not expect that phone call. And then there is no nowhere to pull over so I could give her my whole attention. I said, well, can I come and visit you? If the Lord's will, I don't know how much time I got left. But one thing for sure, please tell your friend to read me First Thessalonians Chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. The one that Cathy just read. She said, those are my encouraging words. Friends, Christ is coming back. It's a, it's a phrase or a sentence. Everybody know it. Most people don't want to admit it. The Christ is coming back. Some people refer to it as uh, the world is ending to avoid mentioning the Christ is coming back. Some might say that uh, last days, we are living in the last days. The text said that Christ himself will come. Will come for us believers. The gospel has been preaching for many years. For many years. What do we mean when we say the gospel? Some might say John 3.16. For God so loved the world. Some might say that uh, if we confess our sin. Some might even say that uh, if we say with our mouth 
that Christ is Lord, we shall be saved. All those verses pointed to one person, Christ. Whether you like it or not, Christ is coming. That can be a good news for some people. It can also be a bad news for others. Good news, if you know Christ. Bad news, if you don't know him. During the early church, the believers were excited for his return. They thought that those who fall asleep will miss the occasion. They were anxious to leave it. Do I make sense? I don't see no hands. Between you and me, I have to like a few people. If you don't understand me, go like this. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. We're going somewhere. Christ himself, he's coming for his people. What do we mean by that? Have you ever had an appointment with someone? You know that they are coming, but you don't know exactly when they are coming. For some, it can be frustrated, right? You know that person is coming, but you don't know when. The only thing on your part to do is to be prepared. When that person comes, so you are, you are ready. Since Christ is coming, we do not know when he is coming. We are expected to be ready as believers. Here's where it gets interesting. Christ himself is coming with a shout. When it comes to noise, noises get people's attention. Noises mean something is happening, something is going on. Christ himself will shout. Christ himself will come with his angels. Voice. The trumpet will sound noise. Here's what comes to mind, friends. When you hear those sounds, it means the beginning of eternity. There is no doubt about it. The beginning of eternity. The end of of suffering. It also means the end of battles between Satan and us. That's hope. When Christ comes, he's not coming just like before. His presence will be felt. Noise. People might not know the reasons for the noise. But those who are saved will be in action. Does that make sense? Us, thank you very much. <laughs> Us, as believers who are saved, will be with him forever. But those who are in the world may or may not know what's going on. 
the reason why we'll be in action is because we are ready. Since we know that is coming, since we know that we have to be ready, the only thing remaining is how. It's when. If you remain ready, those questions don't mean nothing. It means nothing, friends. I have two nieces in Florida. The youngest one, when she was young, she could not tell the difference between days and nights or months and stuff like that. She always wants me to go and visit her, not them. When are you coming to visit me? She always said that. So she, so she can go to the beach. <laughs> My reply always is to meet her on a level. When your teacher say good stuff about you, when you behave and make sure you make something good for me to take back home, like, like create, like, you know, design something, a picture, whatever, for me to take back home. She kept her eyes open. When she go to school, she behave. When they give a report card, uncle, I got my report card. I did good. Now I'm working on something for you. It's up to me now to book my plane. Make sense? She to book my plane ticket. Okay. Now, since... She's working on creating me like a flower or something. I have to keep up my words to her. Every day, I'm done. Are you coming? When? The answer always remains, I'm on my way. Every car that passes by her house, she take a peek, expecting uncle to be at the front door. Finally, she starts losing patience. Uncle lied to me. I will not talk to uncle. The day I was at her house, I was talking to her on the phone, but she, she didn't know that I was there. Then I say, look out at the window. Uncle! She was happy, excited. First thing she did, open the door, let's go <laughs> to the beach. She was ready. Let's go back to the story. When Christ comes, we will be with her. Excuse me, with him. Let's get our gender right. Gender right. Christ is he. <laughs> we will be with Christ forever. We will be with him forever. Just like Lois earlier, those words are encouraging words for Lois. Those words also, at the end, Paul said, are encouraging words for us also. <laughs> are we looking for the coming of Christ? He's coming. If we are not ready, it's not too late. It is not too late. As we come into a close, friend, what motivates you right now in your life? What gets you going right now in your life? Is it the coming of Christ? 
I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. Whether I live or I die, I know where I will be. I'm pretty sure you know where you will be. In order for you not to be able to be in heaven, is for you to deny him. Friends, the gospel is clear. As we close, if you are not sure that when the trumpet sound, when Christ himself shouts, or when the angels, when the voice of the angels echoes, if you are not sure that you will be with him, we are pleading with you to come forward. Friends, you cannot miss it. It's impossible. It's impossible. Let's stand to sing the last song. The altar is open. The choice is yours. If you do not know him, come forward. If you want an intimate relationship with him, come forward. Do not wait. Be ready. Let's stand.